When I told my brother I was reading How to Win Friends and Influence People by Dale Carnegie, he said on his copy he had crossed out the word influence on the front cover and replaced it with the word inspire. That might be a more accurate title for the best-selling self-help book, How to Win Friends and Inspire People. Because Carnegie doesn't just lay out principles for how to deal with people. He also teaches us how to spark inspiration in them. Learning how to work with people is a valuable SK. Ill. Learning how to motivate them to follow us or take action is priceless. Carnegie divides his book into three sections, each with a list of principles summarizing the main ideas. I won't list out all the principles you can find them through a quick Google search. Instead, I've collected a few of my favorite quotes that capture the core and most helpful recurring ideas. If we can master the art of inspiration, we can find success anywhere we go, but the person who has technical knowledge plus T. He ability to express ideas, to assume leadership, and to arouse enthusiasm among people that person is headed for higher earning power. How well you know your industry may have something to do with how many dollar bills are sitting in your bank account right now, but a much better predictor of wealth actually isn't your technical knowledge, it's your ability to deal with and inspire other people. Learn to lead. Learn to communicate. Learn to inspire confidence and excitement. These are the skill. S that get paid big buckaroos because only some people ever master them. For the great aim of education, said Herbert Spencer, is not knowledge, but action. And this is an action book. Carnegie focuses on real-life examples of people putting his principles to work. He emphasizes the importance of taking direct and immediate action in order to see firsthand how his principles operate in real life. Learning is only useful if you put your newfound knowledge into motion. Action is the source of Chong. Ian Growth In order to inspire others, we have to take action, put ideas to the test, and gain real experience. Criticism is futile because it puts a person on the defensive and usually makes him strive to justify himself. Criticism is dangerous because it wounds a person's precious pride, hurts his sense of importance, and arouses resentment. Probably the worst thing you could do when trying to change someone else's mind or actions is criticize them. Not only does it raise their hackles, but I, T also wounds their pride. It's easy to get frustrated when someone does something we don't approve of. It's even easier to point it out and let our frustrations escape. But this almost always leads to anger and resentment. No one likes to be criticized. No one likes to believe they did something incorrectly, poorly, or wrongly. Everyone likes to think of themselves as valuable and capable. Instead of criticizing, ask questions and get to know the other person's perspective first. You'll be in a much better position to try to change their mind after you understand them. I shall pass this way, but once any good therefore that I can do, or any kindness that I can show to any human being, let me do it now. Let me not defer nor neglect it, for I shall not pass this way again. What harm is there in showing a little bit of generosity or kindness? Why not show warmth and appreciation for another person? It can be difficult to show a bit of kindness. We think about ourselves and our own problems so mu. Ch that we are easy to dismiss or reprimand others. Carnegie reminds us that we only have one chance at any interaction in life, so we might as well show some generosity. Because any fool can criticize, and most fools do, it takes much more courage to be kind, we should be aware of the magic contained in a name, and realize that this single item is wholly and completely owned by the person with whom we are dealing, dot and nobody else. A person's name may seem inconsequential. A name is a name is a na. B. There are a thousand Joes, Debras, and Keiths, then why do we thrill when someone calls us by our own names? Despite the hundreds of other Jessicas out there, we instinctively connect our identity with our name. The next time you meet someone in business or in your personal life, make a point to ask them their name, repeat it back to them, then use it the next time you see them. You will instantly build rapport and show them that you took the time to care. A person's toothache means more to TH. A person than a famine in China which kills a million people. A boil on one's neck interests one more than 40 earthquakes in Africa. Understanding how self-absorbed most people are will help you immensely in life. First, it will give you the freedom to stop worrying about what other people think of you which is probably little to nothing. Second, it will help you instantly connect with other people because you already know the topic that most interests them themselves. After reading How Do We End Friends and Influence People, I realized that deep down, I had already known many of the principles Carnegie suggests adopting. However, I had yet to acknowledge and act on those ideas. Once we put thoughts and feelings into words, they come into sharper focus. It is then easier to use them in our daily lives. Think of these quotes next time you find yourself in a difficult situation. How can you listen and show some generosity? 
do you find yourself criticizing people you meet or loved ones? H. How can you show someone in your life that you honestly appreciate them? With just a few tweaks and a little more generosity, we can start to not just influence people, but inspire them. In life, we are often faced with uncertainty. The future is shrouded in mystery, and we can never truly know what lies ahead. It is natural to desire control over our lives, but the reality is that uncertainty is a necessary part of growth and opportunity. However, many of us fear uncertainty because we lack the necessary skills to navigate through it. This is known as negativity bias, where our minds tend to focus on and ruminate over negative information while disregarding the positive, our CRA. Being for security is nothing more than an illusion that provides us with a false sense of safety. David Rock, author of Your Brain at Work, explains that the brain desires certainty, and a sense of uncertainty and lack of control can elicit strong emotional responses. We look to our external environment for reassurance and balance in an attempt to regain a semblance of control. Bruce Hood, in his book The Self-Illusion, affirms this idea, stating that situations with important outcomes can cause stress due to uncertainty, compelling us to take action in order to maintain the illusion of control. While the belief that we are in control of our lives can be both comforting and deceiving, the reality is that we have limited control, if any at all. It should come as no surprise that our minds tend to exaggerate situations, making them feel more daunting than they actually are. This tendency to catastrophize events within a negative context is a common psychological phenomenon, so how can we learn to embrace uncertainty without becoming overwhelmed by the accompanying emotions Embracing uncertainty requires a shift in perspective. Instead of resisting the forces of life, we must learn to surrender to them. It may be uncomfortable, but we must lean into our fears and insecurities rather than running away from them. When anxiety arises, we should ground ourselves in the present moment and choose a time to examine the root cause of our anxiety. Have we experienced similar anxieties in the past? If so, are we simply repeating those feelings instead of dealing with them? Fear is a powerful and confronting emotion, yet it can also be a useful one. By gradually exposing ourselves to fear, we can diminish its impact and gain self-assurance. Uncertainty is a deep knowing that everything will unfold as it should, and embracing it strengthens our commitment to align with the natural order of life. We must become comfortable with uncertainty because it is an inherent part of our existe. NCE Rather than retreating from it, we should expose ourselves to it a little bit at a time. As Roman Emperor Marcus Aurelius once said, if you are distressed by anything external, the pain is not due to the thing itself, but to your own estimate of it, meaning that we have the power to change our perspective at any given moment. Finding the balance between uncertainty and maintaining a sense of control without manipulating outcomes is crucial. By letting go of tension, anxiety, and fear and ember, acing the unknown, we can allow uncertainty to guide us towards re-evaluating the past and making new choices based on new information. Often, the most ambitious plans and opportunities emerge from the veil of uncertainty. Embracing uncertainty also requires us to cultivate curiosity and excitement. As we become more comfortable with uncertainty, we open ourselves up to new possibilities and begin to see it as a source of growth and learning. Additionally, it is essential to be mindful of our prez and actions as we navigate uncertainty. By doing so, we can move towards the unknown with a firm resolve to resolve past issues and create a compelling future. In conclusion, uncertainty is an inevitable part of life. Instead of fearing it, we must learn to embrace it and see it as an opportunity for growth and transformation. By shifting our perspective, accepting the unknown, and taking action in alignment with our values, we can navigate through uncertainty with courage and confidence. So my friend, I ask you, what actions will you take in your life to embrace uncertainty and create a more fulfilling future? For many years I had a problem that I didn't even know about. It hindered me in countless situations and often derailed any progress I made. And now that I know about it, I see it in nearly everyone around me. Most people, like me, have a habit of celebrating too early. I learned this lesson while reading a book written for kids. Luke Madigan recommended a book called The Way of the Warrior Kid by Jocko Willink. The book's premise is simple. A young boy who can't swim gets picked on by a bully, can t do multiplication tables, and can't do a single pull-up is visited by his uncle, who is a Navy SEAL. The uncle teaches the young boy how to improve and change. At one point in the story, the young boy does four pull-ups. He gets so excited and starts celebrating. 
He had never done that many pull-ups in his life, but the Navy SEAL wasn't as excited. The job wasn't done, the goal was 10 pull-ups, the boy had only done 4, no celebration not yet. Most people have a mental release when something good ha. Huh? P pens to them. For some reason the pressure stops and there is relaxation. And for most people, the tendency to celebrate too much is a habit. Jocko Willink's message is powerful don't celebrate until the job is done. Small victories along the way are good, but winning the war is imperative. Do not let the small victories get in the way of the bigger ones. While the young boy in Willink's warrior kid is ecstatic that he did four pull-ups, the Navy SEAL calmly says good and keeps pushing. The huge celebration in the moment is not worth the possibility of derailing your chances of success. Stop giving up what you really want for what you can have in the next few moments. Most people do not like doing the consistent work that leads to success. So the first taste of victory is a welcome justification to stop doing the work. That is a mistake, and I've made this mistake countless times. Years ago, I wanted to buy equipment for my freelance audio and video business. I had so much extra vacation tea. Email that I asked the HR director if they could buy out my vacation to make some extra money. I purposefully hadn't taken my vacation time because the company was going through litigation. There was no time to waste. Amazingly, she said yes. I was so happy. I thought I was going to make $3,000, so I stopped thinking about how to generate the money. I celebrated too early. Once she went up the chain, however, the request was ultimately denied. I was crushed. My celebration caused me to stop doing W. Had I needed to do for a period of time, the first time I received a five-figure check in business, I was overjoyed. I also received a free trip, which was amazing. I actually had some money. But it did something to me mentally that caused me to stop the activities that got me the check and the trip. The success and celebration ended up stalling my progress. I celebrated too early. I had to redo so much of the work I had done previously. For years I wanted to write. I used to get so excited by act. Ule writing something that I didn't consistently write. This always stalled my progress and prevented rapid improvement. Many years ago, I heard a story from an ancient Spartan warrior who won the equivalent of the modern-day Olympics. For his victory, the warrior received an incredibly valuable trophy. It was nearly priceless, adorned with gold and jewels, a magnificent work of art that symbolized the champion's victory. The warrior graciously accepted the incredible trophy, but the day after the competition, the warrior sold the trophy and kept training. The trophy was an expression of how other people felt about the warrior's achievement. But the warrior was focused on his own internal barometer of success. Do not let the celebration of any victory distract you from the bigger picture. When someone congratulates you for a small victory and tells you that it is amazing, calmly remember Jocko Willink's Navy SEAL and say to yourself, the milestone is good, and keep going. Consistency will too. RN into excellence. The habit of celebrating too early can derail us. Eliminate it and move forward. Celebrate when the job is done. Take care of your business and move forward. It's not about the celebration, it's about victory. Music thank you for watching this video. If you found it valuable, consider giving a tip proportional to the value received. You can find the link in the description. And don't forget to subscribe, like, and hit the notification bell. What actions from this video are you going G to implement in your life? Let us know in the comments below. Stay focused, stay consistent, and keep pushing for victory. Outro music.